Well, hi, George. Hello, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm just so happy to be talking to you and grateful for this time that we have together. Oh, my pleasure. Happy to be here. <laughs> so I've been watching your show and it's so fun. You are just a joy to watch. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing that. And I have a few questions because it's just, I have a lot of questions, but I know that I can only ask you a few. So, <laughs> so the first thing is, um, what is it that you love about traveling? I mean, I think it's the, the kind of the thrill of discovering new places of kind of the, the unknown of not necessarily knowing what any particular day might hold. Um, just kind of getting out of your comfort zone, doing things that you wouldn't do in your hometown. I think that's what I really like about it. Yeah. And, and what about that? Do you love um, communicating with the audience and sharing with us? I'm, so, what, I'm sorry, could you say? I, what, uh, a, what about what you told me? So what, what about that do you love most sharing with, with us, oh, your viewers? Um, I think I like just, you know, showing people, you know, that you can have fun doing it on a budget uh, without breaking the bank that, you know, more than money, creativity, and uh, opening yourself up to new experiences is, is what really matters, not just, you know, the, uh, the thickness of your wallet. Oh, I love that so much, especially because my audience is all moms with sometimes large families. And so sometimes it's, it's easy to think that you can't do it because you don't have the funds. And speaking of that, how do you decide how to spend your budget? Uh, well, at first, I try to do a bunch of different things that uh, I try to hit a different categories so that there's something for everyone. Uh, so there's not, you know, not just food or drink or history or culture. There's a little bit of everything. So yeah. hopefully everyone can find at least one thing that they can kind of zero in on and say, oh, yeah, I like that. Um, but beyond that, I just I try to find things that are, are undervalued. Uh, that are maybe a little less known. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, really, I, I know I've hit my mark when I talk to someone who's from that city and they say, I've never heard of any of this stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, there it is. That's, that's the reaction I was going for. Yeah, well, we, you just hit your mark because we live in, in Dallas, Fort Worth area. And most of the things that you hit on that town were very unknown to us. And uh, we have actually been to a lot of the places that you featured in your Houston episode, but there were some that we just had no idea about. And actually, I have a question about that because Irma, who, you know, you went to her restaurant, I actually had a chance to interview her before, I think, last year. And she is just the most positive and delightful person. So I want to hear you about your experience with her. Uh, I mean, she was just a sweetheart. Um, and uh, yeah, we just, we heard about Irma's from, uh, from our contact at the Space Center Houston, uh, yeah. the social media coordinator over there. Uh, we, were, we were just kind of asking him as we, as I often do, I ask locals, uh, you know, hey, know of any uh, restaurant or, or cool places? And uh, he recommended Irma's to us. And so we just kind of went there and just said, hey, can we shoot this segment here? And um, they said, yeah, sure. And uh, they were very gracious and uh, helpful. And Irma was just great. She was, you know, uh, chatting me up on camera, you know, and just being, being silly and just leaning into all the, the silliness that uh, the show is. And uh, her food was amazing. Okay, that, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah. That's a given. That's a given. Irma's food is great. <laughs> Oh, I love that. So one of the things uh, that I want to know, because I live in Fort Worth, is what did you think was the most unique thing about Texas in general? I mean, I think I, in the Dallas episode, I did, you know, I wasn't in town uh, for the Texas State Fair. Um, I was there in August, and that's in, I think, September or so. September. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the, uh, I did some research on the Texas State Fair in general and the, the food concoctions that, yeah. <laughs> uh, that occur there and a uh, real, real, lot of creativity involved. Yes. And uh, I, I've, 
find that really fun. Um, and I was really happy to be able to sample one of the, the winners from a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, the fun, funnel cake bacon queso burger. Yeah. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. And, and actually, the size when you go to the state fair is everything is huge. So. Everything's yeah. here in Texas, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So I have one question here that I want to make sure that I ask you is um, okay. So with the, the you know the the current because you you filmed pre pandemic yes and uh, thankfully things are opening up again and uh, but how did you cope with travel being banned with that being one of your passions because I I can relate to that and I know many of my viewers also do so I would like to know how someone like you so contagiously positive keeps positive during something like this? Well, you know, it's uh, been a challenging year for, for everyone. Uh, I've had it much better than a lot of people. I've, I've managed to avoid COVID. My family did um, manage to avoid it. And so, you know, everyone has been healthy and that's, you know, the, the number one concern for me, yeah. uh, you know, people in my, my immediate uh, surrounding. Uh, but other than that, you know, Try to find stuff around that. I, you know, I kept trying to, you know, making videos on my personal YouTube channel, um, you know, more, uh, you know, smaller, not not travel based, but, yeah. you know, yeah. just kind of in my uh, small universe here in my apartment. Um, but, you know, I tried to stay positive, but it's been a challenging year. But, uh, you know, like you said, things are starting to, to open up again. And uh, I'm, I'm, you know, vaxxed and I'm eager to get back out there once, you know, it's uh, it's it's safe to do so. Yeah, I love what you said because uh, you found a way to stay connected to your passion at a different level and in a different way. And I got to go and find your YouTube channel because <laughs> they're going to be fun to watch too. And so um, one last thing. So when did the travel bug bite you? Like how, when did you find out that travel was something that you were passionate about? And also that media being sharing, you know, in million stories, all of this fantastic travels that you uh, share with us. I want to know where that came from and, and how that started. Um, I think it probably took hold probably around in college or so. Um, you know, maybe, you know, traveled a little bit with my family in high school, but uh, in college, um, you know, I went to, to London for spring break once and we just kind of uh, did an impromptu weekend trip to Amsterdam while we were there with, you know, nothing but the clothes on our back, basically. And uh, sort of that kind of adventurous spirit, I think, uh, really clicked with me at that time. And so I think that's when it probably really took hold. Um, and yeah, I uh, tried to do as much of it uh, on my own, but uh, my background is in television. I worked in TV for, you know, over 10 years. And um Eventually, it just kind of made sense to combine those two aspects of my life and start making travel content on, on YouTube. And so uh, I did that. And uh, that's kind of how I got uh, in touch with Million Stories, an old coworker, um, uh, a guy who uh, wrote on a show with me. I used to write for the show Mike and Molly. If you remember that show? Yes. Oh, oh wow. But uh, one of the other writers there knows someone over at Million Stories, and they said, hey, do you know... Uh, you know, a younger guy, you know, younger millennial type who, you know, makes videos. And he's like, as a matter of fact, I do. And uh, <laughs> he put me in touch with them and it kind of went pretty quickly from there. Well, I can't blame them. They, they were mesmerized, I'm sure. <laughs> but one of the uh, last thing that I wanted to ask you, because, you know, I do um, write and, and connect with families, is why do you think since you started so young, to, to love travel and to see the value in it. Why do you think that moms um, could, I don't like the word should too much, but why could they uh, invite more travel into their lives and, and actually give that experience to their kids? What are the benefits that you see in that? And, and maybe some surprising benefits that you found along the way. I mean, I think travel does you know, it opens up your mind a little bit. It just, it makes you more, um, 
kind of aware of, of what, uh, you know, what else is out there in the world. I, you know, uh, one thing I said to my mom once who, you know, was kind of questioning why I was traveling so much. And she kind of said, you know, not, not all education is done in the classroom. I think mm-hmm. there is something to learn from going out, seeing other places, tra- you know, and you don't even have to travel. It's, it's you know, trying different food, going to a, 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 a restaurant you've never been to that has a completely different type of cuisine that you've never tried before. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you can do that in your hometown and just kind of opening up yourself up to different things. I think it just um, makes for a, a more well-rounded uh, kind of, uh, you know, person. And uh, I think it's a, you know, good thing for kids. You know, not that I have kids, I shouldn't. But <laughs> well, you were one. So I, I was one. I've seen that experience. Experience. That counts. Yeah. Yeah, you know some kids too, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're good. <laughs> and is there anything else that you would like to share? Um, yeah, well, uh, George Goes Everywhere. It's available on millionstories.com, uh, which it's you know, all about focused on financial literacy, um, breaking the taboo of talking about money so that you can then take control of your financial future. Uh, and it's completely free. You don't have to sign up for anything. There's no hoops to jump through. But uh, yeah, millionstories.com. I love it because I love million stories and the you know the foundation and what they're trying to do to educate everyone and especially families around these topics that are uh, there's a stigma around them, but there shouldn't be because they are so critical for our families and our society. So ah. thank you so much, George, for being so wonderful, so generous with your time and patient in, in scheduling this interview and flexible. Oh. I really, really appreciate that. And everyone, so millionstories.com, I'm really grateful. And also let's find George on YouTube because you know he's a lot of fun. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me.